This is lesson 13, which is, roughly covers pages 79 to 87 of the Automate the Boring Stuff with Python textbook. So in this lesson, we're going to cover lists. A list is a value that contains values. It contains multiple values in an ordered sequence. The values inside a list are sometimes called items. Typed out as code, a list begins and ends with square brackets, just like a string begins and ends with quotes. The values in the list are separated with commas. That is, the items are comma delimited. So we can have a bunch of string values separated by commas, like cat, bat, rat, and elephant. This is a list value that contains four values. You can assign it to a variable just like any other value. So spam equals, I'll just copy and paste this, so when I type spam as an expression, like any other variable, it evaluates to the value inside of it, uh, inside of the variable, which is this list value. In order to access an item in a list, you use an integer index for the item's position in the list. The index also begins and ends with square brackets. So we could have something like spam zero. This isn't a list, it's the index because it comes after a, a list value. And the first item is at index zero. So this expression evaluates to cat, which is the first item in that list. We can do this with, we can do this with all of the indexes in this list. And we can see how this evaluates using the evaluation visualization tool. Here we have spam is set to that list value and spam index zero evaluates like this. First, the spam variable evaluates to the list inside of it. And then this entire list and index combination evaluates to the item inside the list at that index. Same thing here for the index of one. Spam evaluates to the list, and then this evaluates to the value at index one. Lists can also contain other list values. The values in these lists of lists can be accessed using multiple indexes. So if we had a spam variable that contained a list, and inside this list was another list, say one that contained two strings, cat and bat, and then we had a second list that was, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. In that case, index zero would just be that first list value, since this is the first item in the entire list. And then we could have additional indexes to evaluate to the item inside that list in the list. So we can use the visualization tool there. We have that list of lists stored in spam. So spam evaluates to the list value inside of itself. And then this index evaluates to that first list. And this index evaluates to that value inside the list of lists. The same thing here when we try to get the index one, index four inside of spam. Spam evaluates to that list value. This index evaluates to the item inside that list. And we have another index here, so that evaluates to the item inside that list. And while indexes start at zero and go up, you can also use negative integers for the index in Python. These count from the end going backwards. The integer value negative one refers to the last index in the list and the value negative two refers to the second to last index in the list and so on. Let's come up with a list value. I'll just copy and paste this. The negative one index refers to the last item in the list. And negative two refers to the second to last item. And we can use lists and index inside of expressions just like any other value. So if we have an expression that does string concatenation like this,
we can see that all of these evaluate to the strings inside of the spam list, which are then concatenated with the other strings, which then evaluates to this single string value here. The elephant is afraid of the bat. Just as an index gets a single value from a list, a slice can get several values from a list. Like an index, a slice is typed between square brackets, but it also has two integers separated by a colon for the start and end indexes. So a slice has two indexes inside of it. So the slice 1, 3 starts at the index 1 and goes up to, but does not include, the value at index 3. So these values are returned in the slice and they're returned as a list value themselves. It's a brand new list created from the previous list. So just keep that in mind, an index evaluates to a single item in a list, whereas a slice will evaluate to a new list value. Remember how we can assign values to a variable if we put that variable on the left side of this assignment operator. So here, spam now contains the string value hello. We can do the same thing with indexes and slices. So if I set the spam variable to be this list value 10, 20, 30, I could then use an index to assign a new value to an item in the list. So here, spam1 means I want to assign the value that's at index1 to be set to this new value, hello. And the same can be done with multiple values in the list by using a slice. So if I have spam13, and I'll re replace it with uh, cat, dog, mouse. This means take this spam list and starting at index 1 and going up to but not including index 3, which is beyond the length of the, uh, beyond the last index of the list, so basically replace these two values with these three values. So we can assign a slice to a new list and that will change the items in the list. And as a shortcut, you can leave out one or both of the indexes on either side of the colon in a slice. So leaving out the first index is the same as using zero or the beginning of the list, and leaving out the second index is the same as using the length of the list, which will slice to the end of the list. Enter the following into the interactive shell to see what I mean. We have the variable spam be set to a new list value containing these four strings. And if we wanted to have a slice that starts at the very beginning, Normally we would press 0, but we could just leave that out entirely. And Python will realize that by having this blank for the first index in a slice, we mean, oh, start at the very beginning. So this will go uh, start at the beginning and go up to, but not including the item at index 2. Now this evaluates to cat bat. Meanwhile, if we leave out the second one, that means basically grab all the values up to the end of the list. So starting at index one and going all the way to the end of the list, that will be our slice. And it returns those three values. If you want to delete values from a list, use a del statement. So I can have this list value stored in spam, but say I wanted to delete uh, this rat string from the list, I could say del spam index2, and that value gets deleted from the list. All of the items after that get moved up one, so it doesn't leave any gaps in the list. So if I ran del spam2, it would delete the item at index2, which is now elephant, which is why now the spam list only contains cat and bat. You can think of the del statement as an unassignment statement. It's the opposite of the assignment statement. So in previous lessons, we talked about the len function, which returns the number of characters in a string. If you had len hello, this would evaluate to five, but you can also pass len a list to return the number of items in a list. So if I passed it a list one, two, three, 
it would return three because that's how many items are in this list that we passed it. And just like you can do string concatenation with the plus operator, you can also do list concatenation with the plus operator. And the same applies for doing string replication. Remember that was when we could multiply a string by an integer and that would evaluate to a new bigger string. You can do the same thing with list replication. In fact, many of the things that you can do with strings, Python also lets you do with lists. You can think of a string value as a list of single character values. In fact, there's a list function that returns a list form of the value that you pass it. This is sort of the same thing as when we need to convert a string to an integer with the int function, or convert an integer or some other value to a string with the str function. We also have a list function we could pass it a value like hello and it'll return a list with each of these values coming from the original string. If you need to determine whether a value is or isn't in a list, you can use the in and not in operators. Like other operators, in and not in are used in expressions and connect to values. So there's a value that you're looking for and then the in operator and then the list value where it might be found. So we can see that howdy in this list, hello, hi, howdy, hey is, evaluates to true because this string can in fact be found inside of that list. Whereas if we had something like the string cat or maybe the integer 42 inside that same list, it would evaluate to false. And the not in the not in operator does the exact opposite. We can copy and paste this expression. Not in. This will evaluate to false because the this value here is found inside the list. So not in will evaluate it to false. So to recap, a list is a value that contains multiple values. The values in the list are also called items. And you can access items in a list with its integer index. And remember, the first index is 0, not 1. You can also use negative indexes. Negative 1 refers to the last item, negative 2 refers to the second to last item, and so on. You can get multiple items from the list using a slice. The new list items start at the first index and go up to, but don't include, the second index. The len function, concatenation, and replication work the same way with lists that, and the way that they do with strings. And you can convert a value into a list by passing it to the list function.